Happy October. It's a long time since I've been here sitting behind my window and I also can see the leaves start to change. Fall has definitely arrived here in Norway and there will be a lot of fall themed videos coming your way but also one summer vacation vlog I will kind of like sneak in um, and I hope you're gonna enjoy that. For today I thought we're gonna talk about my ongoing goal that I have set for 2021 and that was to lose 62 pounds. I'm not gonna lose 62 pounds in 2021. I have planned one and a half to two years for this project but we are on a good way and I'm really happy with my progress and I think I'm gonna share it a bit today with you. So I actually already reached my goal of 20 pounds I think five weeks ago I just said not time to film it <laughs> but these five pounds took definitely longer to reach last time i shared my progress um, was when i lost 15 pounds i will link it up in the cards and since then a lot of things have changed so i finished my program with my new year's resolution coach Kali titano which has been unbelievably helpful and i can see on a daily basis how I'm using the tools that we have practiced and learned in that time but of course you don't have her in the moments where you kind of weak where you just want to eat instead of feeling your feelings um, in situations or days where you feel really down and I think I also lost some consistency with some tools that I had used while I was also got get coached one of them was to have a weekly review every Sunday, to log victories and setbacks. Um, and also I changed from writing in my planner to the 90 day challenge by Bloggy Lattice that I had got. And, and especially that didn't really help. And, and that took me a while to understand. I had one day per page so i had more space to ride and still i felt like i was too much in one of the days and not could see the whole view of the week i guess that was kind of most difficult to understand that some things just don't work so i got back into my weekly horizontal planner and i really can see that that is a difference and it works so much better but i think that's one really important thing in the journey you try things out you see they don't work and then you try something new or something different or you go back but you just keep going and you're tweaking and try to find what works for you. I was also traveling quite a lot thanks to restrictions that I lifted. Um, so I was in Germany, I went on a trip with my best friend Lisa, I went to Turkey, I went to Berlin. Um, so I was traveling quite a lot and that also made it a little bit more difficult to keep a regular workout routine. My regular days where I would write down what I eat was kind of difficult when you had a buffet and you didn't know what you're gonna eat. But at the same time I could see that things have already changed. I didn't feel lost being on vacation. At the same time they gave me a lot of confidence um, when it comes to how I will go forward when I finish my project because I don't want to plan my food as so detailed as I do now and I want to listen more to my body and I think in that week when I went on vacation there were the first days where a lot of things were very exciting and I tried a bit more but after a while it got really similar again I try to have always fruit in the morning and then something for lunch and then I try to have at least like two or three portions of veggies for lunch and dinner and then around that I could eat whatever I wanted but I still listened to my body and stuff when I was full and because it was all inclusive you could eat almost all day long so I could really listen just to my hunger cues and go when I was hungry and I didn't have to communicate with anybody else so that was kind of really helpful and to see that it went really well and that gives me a lot of hope that when I 
finish with my project that I will be able to kind of like kind of go in the direction of intuitive eating again um, that's kind of like my hope but at the same time it is okay to plan your food at least a bit because well you guess you have to go grocery shopping so a little bit planning is totally okay I think I just don't want to spend so much time on planning everything writing down everything I hope that my body at that point is better in communicating with me and that my mind is better to understand the cues and I can just listen to my body again this is not a video where I tell you what I'm gonna eat and what I do for workouts because I don't follow any certain diet um, I try to tweak my food over time that I have in the end in one year a quite different meal plan that I have to this day like I, I realized that a lot of meals that I'm eating didn't have a lot of veggies in it and I just started in the commitment phase to work a bit more on that and getting a little bit more fruits and veggies in and trying some new recipes but not changing everything at all it was more about still working on eating when you're hungry stop when you're full and learn a lot about why do you want to eat when you're actually not hungry and you probably just want to don't feel something here are some things that i think have helped so much to continue my weight loss journey and now have lost 20 pounds the first one is confidence and i think that really needs to grow over time like in the beginning i didn't want to tell anybody that i was losing weight and now it's more like now i can show it so for example i have a weight tracker on my work desk and I don't feel ashamed before it was like I was hiding it but now I don't feel ashamed more and more because now I have the confidence um, I know that I will reach my goals and I didn't have that in the beginning in the beginning I was really afraid that with everything you learn especially if you read about intuitive eating you get a lot of studies why people are not able to lose weight or why they're not able to keep their weight off and if you then start on a weight loss journey it can be very discouraging and I could see that I started having thoughts like oh maybe this is not gonna work and maybe I'm gonna lose just like five or ten pounds and that's it but now it goes really well it is slow but that doesn't matter because there's no race I want to win. Um, I have a goal in mind and I know I will reach it and that makes it all so much easier because if you have a bad day you don't give up because you know well then tomorrow will be a new day where you can. So I try to learn about this concept that is called save the day so if you have a slip up or things that didn't work out the way you wanted to you still try another action that goes in the direction of your new being, your new self. And I think it's so important to leave this black and white thinking behind, thinking you, this week doesn't work, so I will start next week or next month, or after I'm back from vacation, then I will start losing weight. I think you always can do something for yourself and um, being healthier than you were before. And sometimes you can do more, sometimes you can do less, but it's still kind of, pushes you in the right direction. When I started with my weight loss journey, I thought I had to lose a certain amount of weight in a certain amount of time. And I have to say, I still feel this pressure. Like I'm very proud of having lost 20 pounds now, but I still sometimes feel like, yeah, but it took me a half a year for it. Yeah, well, that doesn't matter because a lot of people are not able to lose 20 pounds. And it doesn't matter if, some people will lose that in, I don't know, two months. The question is, are they able to maintain that weight? And that's the question that I will have to ask myself as well. And I think the healthy habits that I have started to integrate in my life, starting now to kind of stay a bit more. I, When I was in a vacation, I could see that I also craved having some fruits and veggies and not just pizza and pasta. And there I can see that my body is changing and that unhealthy food isn't as interesting as it was before. But for example, when it comes to my night routine, it is easy for me to fall off the wagon and then watch Netflix instead and read for too long or being on Instagram. And the important thing is just to come back 
the next day or the next time you can and putting all these thoughts of how it should be and how it should look like and I think that really helps to battle perfectionism and just keep going and do what you really want to reach. I also had to realize that less is more like I remember like when I showed you my action plan I had so many habits and I really wanted to do more of them and I felt like oh but you, you're planning your food every day and you you wait yourself and you do your evening routine so you can start with this habit and this habit and this habit and it didn't work out at all I had to realize that less is more and it's more important to stay committed to a few habits and work on them so they getting stronger before you start on others. I really want to incorporate like um, being grateful for my food, having like a non-religious prayer. I really would like to have that. I would like to do more stretching. I would like to do more meditation. I would like to do a workout program. I would do so many things and I know that's the dangerous thing and I think that's also a reason why it took me longer now it was because I wasn't consistent with the few habits that I wanted to work on I just tried everything and that was too much another thing is how you react to mistakes slip ups setbacks however you want to call them they are part of the journey and you will have a lot of them on a daily basis and the question is how are you reacting to them so for me, yesterday, I actually overate and I felt like physically terrible afterwards. Um, so I was sitting down today and just writing and journaling and seeing what's coming up. What was actually the reason why did I overate? And I think that's the most important part because paired with perfectionism, your brain often wants to kind of shut down after that and kind of push it away and say oh yeah no we not think about what's happened but it's so important to look at your mistakes and find solutions how you can do it next time or if it was a certain feeling that you felt at the moment and that's why you did a mistake then working on that and I found actually found a printable that was just about that it was like a setback worksheet where you write down what happened how it happened what did you feel? What did you think? And then finding solutions for next time. And that makes you so much stronger. It doesn't mean that you won't make the mistake again. It's most likely it's going to happen again, but like you get stronger over time, making yourself aware of it. And then one day you'll probably be able to stop yourself a bit earlier. And, and with that, you just little by little get there where you have less of them. So when I look on my overeat last night, I could see Yes, I was overeating, but the amount I was overeating was still not that much compared to last year where I would have eaten like two pizzas, um, chocolate, and I would have drank soda and probably would have eaten chips in addition. So the amount has so much decreased. So this is something I really see on a positive note. One habit that really has changed a lot and I never thought that would actually happen is to tell myself I have to eat at the table in my kitchen. Oh my, how much resistance I have for that. Like, it is unbelievable. I really want to eat rather here at my desk or in my chair or on my couch. And there is a lot of resistance to actually just sit down not having any distractions, don't listen to music or a podcast and just sitting in the kitchen and eat there. I'm not able to do it every time. Sometimes the other part <laughs> in me wins, but I really work on that and try to catch myself before I'm starting to eat somewhere else and ask myself, hey, what's going on now? Or if I'm really good, I will also journal about it. So to find out a bit what is happening right now why can't you eat the table and it's usually because I want to use the food for something else like getting some comfort with the hot chocolate here in my blanket and then watching Netflix there's so many reasons what it could be and I really try to catch myself a bit earlier now so these are 
other things that have helped me to lose uh, 20 pounds in the past and now we're working on the next actually 12 pounds until the end of the year that's my goal as i told you in previous videos i have my weight loss planned in different phases and the one we are in is now the endurance phase i call it endurance phase 2.0 because i had to kind of start over again but now i'm kind of like with reduced habits i work on weighting myself every day I write down my 24 hour food plan in the morning. Um, I try to work out like three times a week. And then I work a lot on eating when you're hungry, stop when you're full, eat at the table. And then whenever you wanna eat while you're not hungry, work on that. I really try to incorporate my evening routine that I have a journal there and writing at least a few sentences what happened today or what where were their feelings where I really wanted to eat instead what happened to continue with the mind management that I've started with my coach and actually I already lost 22 pounds now I feel like I'm on a good way with these new Albert shorter list of habits I'm working on and I hope we see each other soon for the next half lost than 25 pounds because I'm already 22 pounds down. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, you can comment down below and then I will see you next Sunday. Have a wonderful day.